Hundreds of thousands requested absentee ballots to vote from home and prevent the spread of coronavirus. But we are learning today that many of those ballots have not come back, and now the polls could be more crowded than expected. Thousands of ballots coming into the Bernalillo County election warehouse by mail. I don't think it's ever, this has ever, ever, ever happened. And I would say that 98% of the people that have voted absentee have never voted absentee before in their life. With nearly 24 hours to go before the polls close on the 2020 primary, so far the Bernalillo County Clerk has received 76,000 of your ballots. But there are still 125,000 more that have not come back. I think it's going to be crowded tomorrow because of our mail system. There's so many ballots that are still in the mail. And we have no control over that. If your absentee ballot doesn't get here before polls close tomorrow, your vote won't count. So instead of telling you to stay home and vote, election officials are now telling you to come to them. People really need to, to be proactive themselves and get out and vote. We'll offer you a mask if you don't have a mask, and we'd respect the fact that you respect our poll workers and wear a mask. If you did not request an absentee ballot, you will have to show up at a voting center. If you still have your absentee ballot and have not mailed it yet, don't. You can drop it off at a special box at the polls tomorrow. If you're worried that you mailed it late and it won't get to the clerk on time, you can still vote in person, but you'll have to tell election officials you've mailed the ballot. And coming up on Action 7 News Live at 6, we spoke to several candidates about their final push to get your vote. For locations where you can cast your vote or turn in your absentee ballot, just visit our website, koat.com, and then click on this particular story. And remember, those polls open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Absentee ballots are due to the county clerks by 7 p.m. Voters who filled out that absentee ballot but didn't mail it may return it in person to any polling location. And if you requested an absentee ballot but didn't get one, just go to a polling location and get a replacement ballot. To find the closest polis polling station to you, just head on over to the website on your screen, which is nmvote.org. And we want to break down the final voting numbers ahead of that primary tomorrow. Over 201,000 people voted absentee this year and 59,000 voted in person. That means over 260,000 people have already voted and a majority of these numbers were from the Democratic Party with over 143,000 voting absentee. We've got all the coverage you can count on on Election Day, so we'll be bringing you all those results as they come in to find out who will face off in the November election for President, Senate and all three U.S. House seats. From up to the minute results to full analysis from our team of political experts. You can join us tomorrow beginning at 4 p.m. for the full coverage of this historic election. Now more on the coronavirus statewide. It is a crucial day here in New Mexico as a large part of our state is reopening its doors. Restaurants are limited to 50% capacity. This does not include bars though. Salons and malls can operate at 25% capacity. Gyms, some state parks and drive-in theaters can also open. These changes in place through the end of June could affect our case numbers as we just hit 78 hundred cases. The village of Las Lunas is announcing its own reopening plan effective today. Even under the governor's orders, they're asking offices to still work remotely when they can. Plus, all city employees will have their temperatures taken. The city's municipal court is restricted to five people in a courtroom and parks and libraries are staying closed. Some news for all you bookworms. The UNM bookstore is officially back open today. The main campus store and the medical and legal bookstore will be open to the public on a limited basis, though. That means the hours will be cut from 10 to 3 and 10 to 1. Capacity will be limited at 25% and sneeze guards and hand sanitizer will be installed. One of Knob Hill's most iconic restaurants is returning after a large coronavirus delay. Scalo's owners told the Biz Journal they plan to open their doors to the public June 8th. They had originally wanted to reopen in April, but after the governor's takeout order in March, they waited. Scalo has been closed for over a year after the old owners filed for bankruptcy. And our lawmakers just announced some pretty great news. Over $20 million in CARES Act funding is coming right here to New Mexico's nursing facilities. 59 skilled nursing facilities will split the funds. The money will help increase staff, scale up testing, and get PPE. This is all part of the $175 billion provider relief fund under the CARES Act.
Furloughed New Mexicans say qualifying for unemployment continues to be difficult. Our partners at the Journal report more than 1,000 city employees are on furlough. 17 percent are required to stay home at least 16 hours per week, and nearly half of those people can't qualify for unemployment because they make more than $460 a week. New on 7, Vitalin is still working to fill that critical blood shortage because of the coronavirus. We told you about this, and they say they are in need of healthy donors, and there has been a 25 percent increase in the need for blood over the last few weeks. All blood types are needed, but especially type O. So if you are interested in donating, just visit Vitalant's website. New on 7, we're getting another look at how the New Mexico National Guard is serving New Mexico right now. In addition to helping the Army Guard and leading medics, the National Guard has administered over 700 tests and prepared over 10,000 test kits. Such important work they're doing right now. All right, I don't know what it was today, Kelly, but it felt it felt really hot. <laughs> I mean, like than yesterday, you know what I mean? And it's more not humid. it's not that hot for us. It is a little more humid. Maybe that's what uh, it was. Really, the last few days have been a little okay. more humid than it was last week, so that's probably what you're feeling. And speaking of the the humidity, the moisture in the air, it is fueling some storms. As we take a look across the East Mountains, uh, you can see some of those storms of firing between Moriarty and Klein's Corners. You can also follow a 285 up running into some lightning there where it meets uh, I-25 uh, rather. In the other direction, just to the northwest of Rio Rancho, a little more lightning uh, flaring up there as this particular little cluster of cells is strengthening and you can see more uh, to the west of those cells strengthening as well. A little bit of a drift. Uh, right now, storms are not moving much, but we will likely see as we have in past days as these storms strengthen, they produce those outflow winds. Those winds run into each other and produce some new storms, uh, kind of like bumper cars out there. So we'll continue likely to watch these areas of small storms uh, grow and develop and produce a few new storms. So I'll be keeping an eye on that for you tonight. And meanwhile, let's look at where we should be. All right, the average temperatures for the first day of June, high of 84, low of 57. By the end of the month, that average is 91. But we are going to see all sorts of 90s in the week ahead. I'll show you that coming up in your seven day forecast. New on seven, the first human trial of antibody therapy to treat COVID-19 is now underway. Eli Lilly and company says patients in New York, Los Angeles and Atlanta are now receiving the treatment. The trial's first phase will test whether the therapy is safe and well tolerated with results expected in late June. If the trial proves to be effective, the treatment could be available by fall. But the CDC now says antibody tests may be wrong half of the time. A lot of the antibody tests initially put out weren't good. The FDA has since put out a policy requiring antibody test makers to submit emergency authorization requests. The CDC says health officials or health care providers using those tests need to use the most accurate they can find and might need to test people twice. Drug maker Gilead Sciences said a study shows the antiviral drug remdesivir can help patients with moderate COVID-19 recover. A study of 600 patients found those given a five day course of the drug were 65% more likely to see clinical improvement after 11 days compared to those given the standard of care. And then those who were given a 10 day treatment of the drug also showed improvement. A lot of you are talking about gaining weight during the pandemic. So now we're learning a little bit about different food cravings. So experts say most are having cravings for comfort foods, right? Surprise, hamburgers, fries, donuts, you name it. Doctors say the binge eating is due to stress and boredom. We do want to remind you about the state's two coronavirus hotlines. So take a look here on your screen. The top number is for reporting symptoms. It's 1-855-600-3453. And if you're not sick but have other COVID-related questions, call that bottom number. That's 1-833-551-0518. One group of Hawaiian fishermen just caught one big fish. And if that wasn't impressive enough, they donated it to some pretty important people. We'll tell you who next.
You're watching KOAT Action 7 News. We now know HBO Max picked up 87,000 new users on its first day of release last Wednesday. Those numbers are a bit lower, though, than other platforms like Quibi, which got 380,000 initial subscribers, or Disney Plus, which picked up 5 million at, it, at its launch. Warner Media Entertainment Chair still says HBO Max has standout programs for everyone from kids through adults. Sylvester Stallone is narrating a new documentary on the original Rocky movie titled 40 Years of Rocky, The Birth of a Classic. It's a blend of director home movies, rehearsal and behind the scenes footage. Stallone, who's now 73 years old, was a relatively unknown actor when he wrote the original Rocky screenplay and starred in the 1976 film. The documentary comes out digitally June 9th. A group of fishermen in Hawaii had a lucky day at sea and decided to use their catch to feed their local health care workers. Take a look at that. Wow. This is a yellow fin tuna weighing 220 pounds. That massive tuna was sent to a seafood distributor. There, the tuna was cleaned, cooked, and prepared into more than 300 poke bowls. And look at that. Those meals were delivered to two Honolulu medical centers. We love seeing all your great photos of New Mexico, so we can share them here. I mean, look at this. A classic New Mexico image. An air balloon. Been a while since we've seen one of these. Karen Gray Beale says she saw it over her house and it was an uplifting start to her day. Ours too, for sure. Don't forget to share yours on our You Local Facebook page. As we enter June, we're seeing how certain U.S. sectors were hit by the virus in May. We break down how construction spending and manufacturing are faring when we come back. You're watching KOAT Action 7 News. We're going to go live to Washington now where President Trump is speaking. Antifa and others. A number of state and local governments have failed to take necessary action to safeguard their residents. Innocent people have been savagely beaten, like the young man in Dallas, Texas, who was left dying on the street, or the woman in upstate New York, viciously attacked by dangerous thugs. Small business owners have seen their dreams utterly destroyed. New York's finest have been hit in the face with bricks. Brave nurses who have battled the virus are afraid to leave their homes. A police precinct has been overrun here in the nation's capital. The Lincoln Memorial and the World War II Memorial have been vandalized. One of our most historic churches was set ablaze. 
a federal officer in California, an African-American enforcement hero, was shot and killed. These are not acts of peaceful protest. These are acts of domestic terror, the destruction of innocent life, and the spilling of innocent blood is an offense to humanity and a crime against God. America needs creation, not destruction. Cooperation, not contempt. Security, not anarchy. Healing, not hatred. Justice, not chaos. This is our mission, and we will succeed. 100 percent, we will succeed. Our country always wins. That is why I am taking immediate presidential action to stop the violence and restore security and safety in America. I am mobilizing all available federal resources, civilian and military, to stop the rioting and looting, to end the destruction and arson, and to protect the rights of law-abiding Americans, including your Second Amendment rights. Therefore, the following measures are going into effect immediately. First, we are ending the riots and lawlessness that has spread throughout our country. We will end it now. Today, I have strongly recommended to every governor to deploy the National Guard in sufficient numbers that we dominate the streets. Mayors and governors must establish an overwhelming law enforcement presence until the violence has been quelled. If a city or state refuses to take the actions that are necessary to defend the life and property of their residents, then I will deploy the United States military and quickly solve the problem for them. I am also taking swift and decisive action to protect our great capital, Washington, D.C. What happened in this city last night was a total disgrace. As we speak, I am dispatching thousands and thousands of heavily armed soldiers, military personnel, and law enforcement officers to stop the rioting, looting, vandalism, assaults, and the wanton destruction of property. We are putting everybody on warning. Our 7 o'clock curfew will be strictly enforced. Those who threaten innocent life and property will be arrested, detained, and prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. I want the organizers of this terror to be on notice that you will face severe criminal penalties and lengthy sentences in jail. This includes Antifa, and others who are leading instigators of this violence. One law and order, and that is what it is. One law. We have one beautiful law. And once that is restored and fully restored, we will help you, we will help your business, and we will help your family. America is founded upon the rule of law. It is the foundation of our prosperity, our freedom, and our very way of life. But where there is no law, there is no opportunity. Where there is no justice, there is no liberty. Where there is no safety, there is no future. We must never give in to anger or hatred. If malice or violence reigns, then none of us is free. I take these actions today with firm resolve and with a true and passionate love for our country, by far our greatest days lie ahead. Thank you very much. And now I'm going to pay my respects to a very, very special place. Thank you very much.
That was President Trump speaking there in Washington about some of the protests that have been going around across the country there in D.C. He said he is ending the riots now after uh, vandals targeted the Lincoln Memorial and some other sites there in D.C. He's also instituting a 7 p.m. curfew in Washington, D.C. and said that any one of these protesters could be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. Brittany. New on seven American factories stalled for the third straight month in May due to the virus. The U.S. manufacturing index came in at 43.1 in May after 41.5 in April. Anything below 50 signals manufacturers are struggling. Hiring and exports are still falling, but at a slower pace than in April. U.S. construction spending fell 2.9 percent in April as shutdowns stopped projects across our country. This is a huge drop from a steady decline in March. Breaking down the numbers here, residential construction dropped 4.5 percent, apartment construction dropped 9.1 percent, and office buildings and hotel construction fell 1.3 percent. And as more businesses are allowed to open up, there is a run on plexiglass. The Wall Street Journal says wait times for sheeting to make clear barriers is sometimes measured in months. Also in high demand, the alcohol for hand sanitizers. The price for that alcohol alone has tripled since January. And new on 7, Pier 1 is officially going out of business. Pier 1 Imports is closing up shop after a court approved its bankruptcy application that now allows Pier 1 to liquidate its retail operations in about 500 stores across the country once they can reopen in the wake of the pandemic. Pier 1 aims to have all of its stores permanently shut down by October. Let's get a check on Traffic Watch 7 now with Kiki Garcia. No traffic, so we're going to move on. You may have seen a major price difference when you're trying to cook some burgers. The spike in meat prices nationwide and what's causing it next. meat you definitely have seen it prices are up and they're up over 21 percent for beef and nearly 18 percent for pork compared to last year that's according to data from the company nielsen and even with meat processing facilities reopening after coronavirus closures the agriculture department says production is still down around seven percent 
Jim Chain, 24 hour fitness worldwide is reportedly preparing to file for bankruptcy. They're currently seeking a loan to help them stay operating as their gyms were shut down across the country for weeks. They're currently about $1.3 billion in debt and operate more than 400 gyms across the country. And new on seven, nearly two years after it was unveiled, Atari's VCS console is ready to hit the stores. The company says about 500 production models should leave the factory by the middle of the month. Atari still has not said what games will be available on the system. A massive big screen reunion, reunion and an all-star musical collaboration are both raising money for good causes and each has a connection with New Zealand. Here's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. All we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given to us. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Elijah Wood, Sean Astin, Dominic Moynihan, Billy Boyd, Orlando Bloom, and Sir Ian McKellen, my fellowship of the ring. Josh Gad's latest Reunited Apart cast reunion is a biggie, the Lord of the Rings. Viggo Mortensen, Andy Serkis, Philip Aboyans, and Peter Jackson joined in. So did Sean Bean, Carl Urban, Miranda Otto, John Reese davis Liv Tyler, and more. They reminisced for nearly an hour, complete with props from the New Zealand set of the trilogy, as a fundraiser for the charity No Kid Hungry. You can find one Zoom to rule them all on Gad's YouTube channel. Finn is working to help the Auckland City Mission in his native New Zealand build housing and social services for those in need. His new song, Find Your Way Back Home, featuring guest vocals by Stevie Nicks and Christine McVie, among others, shows what home means to a range of Aucklanders who've had a variety of life journeys. Proceeds from downloads of the song will go to the mission. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Next on 7, New Mexico now open for business, sort of, where you can now go and what places are still closed and waiting. Plus, comparing the numbers of coronavirus cases, the concern with New Mexico's higher rate of infection among children. Coverage you can count on. KOAT Action 7 News at 5 starts right now. This is a day a lot of you have been waiting for. You can now dine in your favorite restaurant, go to the gym, or get your hair cut. But Nancy Laughlin also shows us the rules that are still in place. Today, some of your favorite businesses are opening back up, but there are still lots of rules. Here's a look. That we get to enjoy a meal either in a patio or in a restaurant, not out of a box. For weeks, Eddie Bagarello, the owner of Mario's Pizza, has been waiting, watching, worrying, and working. With the dining room closed, um, the hardest part was uh, laying off our employees. Now, though, the dining room is back open, the state allowing 50% seating inside restaurants. Eddie says they'll have to do curbside and delivery to survive, but he'll be able to bring back some of his employees. They, they actually get to get out of their house and go to a workplace and put in their five hours, six hours. Bars that get more than 50% of their revenue from booze are still closed, although breweries and wineries can do curbside pickup if their license permits it. This is a really exciting day for us. Today, gyms open too at 50% at Defined Fitness. We opened our doors this morning at 4.30 a.m. At this location alone, we had nearly 80 people in line, socially distanced. According to the order, group classes are not permitted, but personal training is as long as there are no more than two trainees. Also, hair and nail salons, barbershops, tattoo parlors, and massage services can operate at 25% occupancy. Nancy Laughlin, KOAT Action 7 News. And for those personal service businesses like going to a salon, you have to make appointments and you won't be allowed in until your appointment time. Nancy will have more on that coming up at 6. And we have learned today from the city that businesses will begin the process of reopening throughout this month. And some, like the Botanic Garden, will require you to buy timed ticketing starting tomorrow. Also, the Albuquerque Fire Department will be out as well, ensuring places like barbershops, etc., are that have limited capacity and openings are also following the rules and really as part of the education process this is new for all of us it's new for our businesses and we want to make sure that uh, we're all doing the, the right thing he also said you can call 311 if you want to purchase time tickets or to get information 
about repairing storefronts that have been damaged from the protests. And after many hours of peaceful protests yesterday, some small groups of agitators, to use the mayor's words there, began damaging business buildings in downtown Albuquerque. The cleanup on Central started today. Mayor Tim Keller saying these small groups are different from those peaceful protesters who are marching for justice for George Floyd, a black man killed at the hands of Minneapolis police. Business owners in the area say they understand the need to protest, but don't want to see this kind of destruction. And new today, parents everywhere are still searching for the right words to explain these protests to their children. Author and psychologist Beverly Tatum, who writes about race, says open and honest conversations are necessary. And as for white parents, sociologists say it's just as important to address the past as it is the present. In order to understand the present, we have to understand the past. And it might mean that you don't know all the answers and you don't feel confident even talking about this with your children. But that means that you can do some work to learn the answers to these questions. You can take the time to, to read up on this, and this could even be something that you do with your children. Experts say a baby's brain can internalize racial bias as early as two years old. It's a new month today, but the weather looks pretty similar to yesterday with a few storms in parts of New Mexico. Here's meteorologist Kelly Franson. The northwest corner of the metro, and you can see those uh, little thin green bands coming off of those storms. Those are the outflow winds, uh, gusty winds uh, moving through that can also help spark new storms. We've got a stronger storm about halfway between Laguna Pueblo and Rio Puerco. Some lightning, likely some hail with that as well. And all of these storms can produce those gusty winds. We've got some more storms as we take you over just south of Santa Fe. What's been firing around Klein's Corners is dropped a little south and weakened a lid. But keep in mind, these can flare right back up, so I'll continue continue to track storms for you through the evening. New Mexico surpassed 7,800 COVID-19 cases, setting up 113 from yesterday. 362 people have died and almost 2,900 have recovered. And here you can see how the virus has spread across the Navajo Nation. There are now 5,348 cases with almost 2,000 of those individuals having recovered. But sadly, 246 have died. There is concern with the number of children in New Mexico with the coronavirus. It's four times higher than the national rate. Here's anchor Todd Kurtz. Yeah, there gets to be so many numbers tossed around when we're talking about coronavirus here in New Mexico. So I just want to give you a visual representation of a breakdown in cases by age. So take a look at this chart that we're popping up right here. So this is the total case of the virus since it started here in New Mexico. The group with the most cases continues to be those from 30 to 39 years old, 1,317 cases. Now, right below that would be people in their 20s, just 71 cases separating the two groups now. One positive sign when you look at these numbers would be the number of cases in those people 70 and older. Of course, those are the age groups most at risk of severe effects from the coronavirus. Now, a local doctor I spoke with said the lower numbers definitely indicate that older New Mexicans are adhering to their advice and being extra cautious during the pandemic. Now, the worry with so many younger people testing positive for this disease, they're the ones who tend to be asymptomatic. They don't show any symptoms, so they're likely the ones to spread the disease further. As often, they don't even know they have it when you're in your 20s and 30s. Todd Kurtz, KOAT Action 7 News. Fewer than 900 people over the age of 70 in New Mexico have tested positive for the virus. The curfew on the Navajo Nation has now been lifted, and we do have new coronavirus numbers from that area. So right now, there are more than 3,500 active cases on the nation. Yesterday, 98 new cases reported. 26 more people, though, have recovered. But sadly, another five people have died, which brings that total number to 246. New numbers are giving us a deeper look at the coronavirus and race and ethnicity. So take a look at this graph. According to the state health department, more than half of all the cases in New Mexico identify as American Indian or Alaska Native. The group with the second most cases, Hispanic and Latino. White is third with nearly 12%, followed by African American. And Navajo Gaming is preparing to reopen all four of its properties by mid-June. There will be major deep cleaning and sanitizing at each site, and all team members will be required to wear face masks and receive training. They will only operate at 50% capacity. There will be one entrance, temperatures will be checked, and there will be no buffets until it's safe to reopen. PNM is asking state regulators to consider a proposal that would allow it to recover fixed service costs from you, the ratepayer. 
no matter how much electricity is actually used by customers. If approved, the utility will add up how much customers paid for it through 2021, and then compare that with the annual revenue it is allowed to collect to cover their costs. There are now more than 6 million reported cases of COVID-19 around the world. In the last 24 hours in the U.S., 19,000 new cases, 600 deaths. But officials worry it's going to get worse in part because of the violent protests. Here's ABC's Rena Roy. With protests over the death of George Floyd by former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin getting larger and turning riotous all over the country. <laughs> There's calls for concern over the spread of COVID-19, with massive crowds of people marching side by side over the last several days. In Los Angeles, D.C., San Francisco, and many other cities, many of them without masks. After months on lockdown, New York City, the location in the U.S. with the most cases and deaths from the pandemic, is now preparing for phase one of reopening, set to begin exactly a week from today. We spent all this time closed down, locked down, masked, socially distanced, and then you turn on the TV and you see these mass gatherings that uh, could potentially be infecting hundreds and hundreds of people after everything that we have done. 15 states in total have reported an increase in cases. The CDC warning the U.S. could pass 115,000 deaths in less than three weeks. In Minnesota today, restaurants and bars are back in some capacity, but the governor worries about the virus spreading. I would tell those of you who are out there peacefully protesting, if you're starting to get symptoms of COVID-19, please isolate. Um, we will have to do some contact tracing, which I, I have not wrapped my mind around what that would look like in this size. In Florida, Miami beaches were scheduled to reopen today, but that's now been pushed back because of the strain on police. And in Los Angeles, some virus testing sites are closed today. Dodger Stadium has become an LAPD command center. Long lines have formed as people wait to get tested at this site. As you just heard, experts are also concerned about the spread of the virus during protests because shouting spreads more droplets than other activities. According to the CDC, one third of patients are also asymptomatic. Take a look at the Florida Keys where security crews are in the process of taking down barricades preparing to reopen beaches. They closed in March like most of them due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Next on 7, for the first time, George Floyd's family visiting the site where he died. The powerful message from his brother as protests continue across the country. Let's get a check on Traffic Watch 7 now with Kiki Garcia. What's going on? Well, we have final collision clear going on in Rio Rancho 528 at Southern. That crash is just about out of the way. Other than that, though, we're looking pretty good. If you're headed to the west side, you might see some brake lights on Paseo near the river. For News Radio 96.3 FM, I'm Kiki Garcia for Traffic Watch 7. And those drive times, all good. Paseo del Norte to the Big Eye, five minutes. The Big Eye to Coors, four minutes. The Big Eye to Tramway, just seven.
You're watching KOAT Action 7 News. As protests spread across the country over the death of George Floyd, riots and damage have now followed. Now many are calling for peace. If I'm not over here messing up my community, then what are y'all doing? A powerful moment this afternoon, the site where George Floyd doing? lost his life, visited by his brother for the first time. My family is a peaceful family. My family is God fearing. His message of peace clear. Today, a time of reflection for many families stopping by to pay their respects at the growing memorial to George Floyd, who was killed by a white police officer. To call this a, a painful chapter in our city's history is clearly an understatement. Across the country, a different kind of reflection. Though many protests over the weekend were carried out peacefully, scenes like this played out in cities like Santa Monica and Washington, D.C. Smashed windows and looting are becoming a bigger story uh, than the broken systems that got us here. Mayor Bowser enacting a 7 p.m. curfew for the next two nights. The National Guard is currently active in D.C. and 25 states. Sunday alone, Chicago had nearly 700 arrests, 132 officers injured. New York City's mayor announcing his daughter was arrested protesting. She was acting peacefully. She believes that everything she did was in the spirit of peaceful, respectful protest. President Trump today berating the nation's governors for not cracking down harder on demonstrators. But across the country, instances of protesters keeping the focus on George Floyd. Derek Chauvin, the fired officer arrested on third degree murder and manslaughter charges for his death, and three other officers involved who are fired but still walking free. Floyd's family calling for them to be arrested after an independent autopsy ruled Floyd's death was homicide by asphyxiation and that weight on his back, the handcuffs and his positioning were contributing factors. When he said, I can't breathe, unfortunately, many police are under the impression if you can talk, that means you're